Hello everyone, this is Ben Rudd from ECFA and what we're looking at today is how to do a grey box. So we've looked at how to create these orthographic images and load them in. Uh, we had a brief look at um, how to do a few ortho um, grey boxing images, but I just thought we'd go through that again. And then we'll start looking at how do we turn that grey box into uh, something more substantial. Where we start looking at using all the other tools we looked at earlier, such as you know bevel, extrude, loop cuts and things like that, to try and get some of these more complex shapes. Uh, to work. So uh, yeah, we'll get started then. So once you've loaded your orthographic images in, it's a really good idea to start testing them with just these primitive shapes up here. So when we say primitives, we mean these polygon primitives here. So we don't want to be doing any edge loops or extrusions or deletions or anything. We might do a bit of that, but not a huge amount because we're really just trying to see whether our orthographic images line up. So if I create that cube and then go to the four way uh, view here, I can now start seeing, okay, do these actually line up properly? Um, and I'm just going to have to change this orthographic view to left one. There we go. Um, yeah, just so we can have that set up like so. So here, for example, I might just do a bit of stretching there and a bit of stretching there. Um, and now I'm just going to bring in few other shapes. So for this bottom bracket here, I'm going to scale it down, scale it out, move it down like so, stretch it on this side. So basically I'm just seeing, okay, yes as an orthographic it looks okay, but what happens when I start putting in some shapes? Do they line up or do I need to go back to the drawing board a bit and see if there's any changes I need to make? So that is the whole idea behind this process here is I'm just trying to sort of test it out. I'm not trying to do any details or any extrusions or any texturing. I'm just trying to see, does this work? Let's see, that needs to be stretched a bit. Again, I'm not going to go into too huge a detail here, maybe not as much as I did with the last one, but just enough for you to get the idea about what you need to do for grey boxing. Um, and look at a couple of the adjustments if we need to make them. So here I'm going to make this just a bit thinner so it kind of hides into that shape there. Here I can see this goes a bit high on this one. Um, so yeah, that's fine. This here goes there cool and now the only other shapes are really the bracket like so so both parts there we have a few toruses so this torus shape um, if you want to change so because like this is really thick um, if you click here, once you've created it, on the channel box, and then down here to Taurus, you can actually change um, you know, how thick it is on the inside and how many uh, rotations. I always try to turn it down a bit, um, and then make it a little bit skinnier. And then go there, scale it down. Looks about right. Yeah, that'll do. Again, I'm not worried about specifics, I just want the overall form to look um, half decent. So I'm going to do the same here with this one. I'm going to rotate this. Oops. Reduce those down. Flat. There we go. Cool. And a neat little trick that I'm going to show you here is if you click on both these shapes, because we want it on to be uh, symmetrical on both sides, what we can do is we can say, and a good thing about this tool here with the torus is if I want to make it thinner now, I can just do that still, even though it's been moved. The only time I can't do it is when I start deleting faces and doing all that sort of stuff. But anyway, um, point is, the trick here, if I want to move this and have it directly mirrored on this other side, I can press Control G, and that centers out this pivot point here, so you'll see that's all zeroed out. And then I go Shift, 
sorry, shift control D and that'll duplicate it. So now there's two of them there. And then I go here and I want to look at which angle I want to mirror on. So it's on the Z axis because that's this angle here. I change that scale from one to minus one and that instantly goes on the other side. And the reason it does that, I'll show you that happening in slow motion, is that when you sort of extrude or change something, uh, scale something in the opposite direction, um, what it tends to do is um, sort of just turn it inside out, and that can be quite useful. So just to show you that trick again, we select both of them, press Control G to go into the center, and go up here to, uh, sorry, we then go select that group that we have just created and that is this group down here latest one and then we go down here to minus one and it goes to the other side I need to duplicate it first so control D and then I can go put that back on regular one and then that works like that it took a bit to get there, but we got there in the end. Uh, I'm now going to duplicate this by pressing Control D and moving it across to the center here and then up and then in. So again, this process shouldn't be too long. I know this video has gone a little bit longer than I would like it to. Um, and most of you have probably already got the idea and know enough to be able to start grade boxing for yourself. But I need to just be able to get this through to completion. So you can see. So again, some might say this is a bit of overkill to have all these details, but if it's a part that's going to be moving, then it's incredibly important to have that in there. And I want these hinges on here, so I'm going to go through the trouble of making them in there. Now, you've probably heard me say Shift D and Control D, and you want to know what the difference is. Well, I'm just about to show you. Um, basically, uh, if you press Control D to duplicate something and then move it and then press Control D again, that duplicate will spawn exactly where the original is. If you press, however, Shift D, that'll create a duplicate. And now if I press Shift D again, it will remember where I moved it to, where I scaled it to, and how I rotated it and actually apply that to the shape as well. So it's very useful if you are having duplicates and you know exactly where you want them to be spaced and evenly spaced, okay? So that's just that one there. I'm going to just press Control D to duplicate this one because I press Shift D again, that would move out there. And I'm just going to make this just a bit bigger and move this here. And that should finish off. As you can see, I press Shift D there. So, so Shift D, if, if you're using it and you know exactly what you're doing, then it can be useful. Otherwise, it can be a bit unwieldy. So I always use Control D unless I know exactly where I want it to be and I'm planning that ahead. But anyway, that should bring us to an end of this part here. So again, a little bit more complicated than it needs to be, but all the moving parts are here. And that's just good because now what I can do is just test out and think, okay, so which parts do I want to move? Um, and how can I make sure that they actually will move before I start losing a lot of time to modeling? Um, so I'm gonna actually go up here to mesh and go combine, and I'm gonna combine it to this shape here as well. And then I'm going to move the pivot point by going here to D and moving that across. And I'm moving it to where I want it to actually pivot from, which is this hinge, specifically the center of the hinge. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is I want to see, okay, if I rotate it now, um, will it collide with anything? And it doesn't look like it will, so that's good. And then same here with this one. I just want to combine that to here, so mesh, combine. And then I'm going to press D, move that up. And so now I can just sort of test out and see, okay, is this gonna move the way I think it's gonna move or are there any obvious collisions? When I first modeled this chest, um, these sort of brackets here came out much further. And as a result, when this turned, those brackets actually collided with the bottom of the crate. So it couldn't open. Um, so that was something that I had to then go back to the drawing board and redesign my orthographics for. So it's worth doing this step and doing it properly just to test out for those sorts of things and just to get an idea of, okay, is this shape and form as pleasing in 3D as it is in 2D? But anyway, um, I've gone on for long enough, so I'm sure you are all well equipped to now do all the things you need to do here. Um, I hope you found those shortcuts useful and I look forward to seeing what you create.